For more news from your Roll Radio Network, some ag news, I'm Jesse Harding. Joining us is Chuck Schroeder, director of the farm, uh, the Rural Futures Institute. Can you tell us a little about that? It's, it's newer and it's getting on the ground. Right. The Rural Futures Institute is really a big idea that was spawned at the University of Nebraska. It is a university-wide effort. That is, it involves all four major campuses as well as uh, the College of Technical Agriculture at Curtis in a very comprehensive effort to help rural people build capacity as well as confidence to wrestle with the challenges and grasp the opportunities before them and changing the trajectory for rural people and places. Now here at the Ag Builders uh, of Nebraska, you were kind of giving them a recap on the year. Can you give us a short recap starting with what's been going on here in the past year? Well, we've, had a, we've gotten a lot of dirt in the air, if you will, uh, in the last 12 months. We now have 24 transdisciplinary projects uh, underway that deal with everything from economic development, entrepreneurship, small business development, to health care. Uh, to leadership development, to community planning, to the justice system. Uh, we are involved with 14 different colleges and universities in six states on these projects, 13 different non-for-profits, nine government agencies, and uh, are engaged with somebody or something in uh, roughly 100 rural communities, mostly in Nebraska, a few in North Dakota, South Dakota, but principally uh, focused here in Nebraska. So we've, had, we've gotten a lot underway. We had a series of three regional rural forums uh, this fall where we had a chance uh, in Nebraska City, Broken Bow, and Scotts Bluff to really roll out to uh, leaders in those regions what we're doing and get their feedback on uh, where we ought to prioritize our efforts in the future. We've also uh, kicked off support for Connecting Young Nebraskans, which is a remarkable organization of roughly 400 young professionals outside Lincoln and Omaha who uh, are engaging together to try to uh, enhance uh, economic and social and cultural opportunities uh, throughout the state of Nebraska. We're very proud of what they're doing. So you talked about those six different topics that you're dealing with. Why were those six areas chosen and what are they going to do to the rural communities? Well, these are, these are high priority areas. Quite honestly, we are dealing with uh, uh, nearly two dozen issues ranging from uh, broadband access and quality of access to rural schools, rural health care, uh, uh, the rural infrastructure, uh, the opportunities for access to the humanities in rural communities, all kinds of things that we know in the end help to create a community that is a legitimate best choice for young professionals, young families who are looking for a place to launch their careers, uh, become involved in the community in a way where, in a place where they can make a difference. We know from our survey data that uh, young professionals out there today are looking for smaller communities where indeed, uh, yes, they have to have legitimate economic opportunity to uh, support themselves and, and advance their lives, but they also want to be in a community where they know that their investment of their talents and their values uh, will be reflected in the nature of that community. So. Uh, that's that's what we're trying to build. Being in that age group that you talked about for the Connecting Young Nebraskans, what is the next step in that and how was that conference like? Well, the, our uh, CYN Summit that we held the last November in Kearney was uh, a phenomenal event. Uh, number one, we had a, a record crowd of over 200 young professionals from 46 communities uh, across the state and uh, their opportunity to uh, not only hear a few good speakers but also to engage with one another in wrestling with these very issues I've just described as as they are dealing with them in their communities. They had the opportunity to talk to their peers in other communities that are facing similar problems, maybe have developed some solutions and if nothing else have at least said to one another, uh, I, I understand what you're dealing with with. I'd love to help if I can. It had a tremendous impact uh, on the participants. We did a survey following uh, that conference, had over 60 percent of the participants respond. Ninety percent of them came away saying, I'm going away ready to go home and make a difference in my community. Eighty-six percent said that I expanded my network of colleagues uh, by being here at this conference. We think there's, uh, there's real there there, if you will, to support this cohort of folks in rural communities because they're out there making a difference. These, these are not 
people that are that are waiting for a hand up or waiting for somebody to pat them on their back. Uh, they're moving and uh, are asking for a little support and encouragement, and we think it's what the Rural Futures Institute ought to do. Talking about that movement, what is the next step for the Rural Futures Institute? Well, we are at this point uh, trying to build our human resource. Uh, we're we're uh, soon to complete a search for a new associate director. Uh, going to be uh, adding some folks uh, helping us administer our grants program, some of those sorts of things. But we're also uh, making some part-time faculty appointments in five key areas, education, research, engagement, public policy, and cultural advocacy. They will give us the opportunity to not only build connections across the campuses, but also to build a base of expertise that will put us in a much better position to respond to rural communities who are coming to us saying, here's something we're wrestling with, can you help us put the expertise together that will help us solve a problem? So uh, uh, people are important in this enterprise and uh, as we're charged to be uh, an international leader in this field, uh, we're, we're looking for the very best people that we can recruit to our cause. If some people want to learn more, what's maybe that website or number that they can call to learn more information about the Rural Institute? Right. If you just uh, Google Rural Futures, uh, believe me, uh, we will pop right up and, uh, and explore what the heck we're doing. Perfect. That's been Chuck Schroeder, Director of the Rural Futures Institute for the Rural Radio Network. I'm Jesse Harding.